Hi church family, it's Ari and it's just so good to be with you here today. Uh, before we begin, I just want to uh, let you guys know that, well, most of you know that I'm going over pretty soon, I'm not exactly sure when, but pretty soon, uh, just to, to serve in the northwest of France in church planting and discipleship and uh, in counseling and evangelism. So. Uh, this week I actually have an appointment at the consulate in LA for um, getting my visa processed. So if you guys could be prayerful about that, I would really appreciate it. Um, so, well, bef before we get into God's word, why don't we just uh, pray and come before him. <sighs> Lord, we thank you, God, that you are uh, a mighty guard about us, Lord. You are our protector, Lord. Um, where can we go from your presence, Lord? Where can we go from your protection? When we're in you, we are in you. And so, Lord, we thank you for that. We pray that your Holy Spirit would just guide us right now, Lord, as we come before your word and look at all of the ways that you protect us, Lord. Um, so we give you thanks, Lord, uh, because you do this role perfectly, Lord. And uh, we just pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I've just been, yeah, thinking about God's protection of us. And I know that this is maybe a topic that we've uh, talked about because of, you know, the virus or just all of the, the things going on in, in the world. But I really wanted to just look at different areas that God protects us, different ways that he protects us. And so um, maybe we can be just meditating on how the Lord has, you know, protected us in the past and how we have that assurance for the future. So I wanted to look at, you know, how he protects us from the enemy, um, from, you know, just how he preserves our relationship uh, in him and how he protects us from ourselves and from our fears and from danger. So. Uh, looking at how he protects us from the enemy, you know, we have a very real enemy, um, the world, um, uh, Satan and our flesh. And so I was loving reading uh, 2 Thessalonians and in chapter 3, verses 3 through 5, it says, But the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. We have confidence that in the Lord you are doing and will continue to do the things we command. May the Lord direct your hearts into God's love and Christ's perseverance. What a powerful, I mean, exhortation and promise. You know, the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. It's simple, but that is who our God is. Uh, he will protect us from him. I mean, yeah, uh, we have that, that assurance that our God is greater and victorious over the enemy's schemes. We have the full armor of God to protect us. Um, and, you know, he also preserves our relationship with him. You know, our lives are secure in him. And so in John 10 verses 27 through 29, um, it's just going through all of that. You know, uh, Jesus saying our, you know, so our lives are and our souls are secure in him. Jesus says, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one shall snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my father's hand for I and the father are one. So he's always protecting us, you know, from, uh, from the things that come up against us, you know, from the enemy's schemes, from our temptations. He protects us from, you know, ourselves, sometimes from our own desires. Um, you know, I think most of us can reflect on our, on our lives and just be so grateful that God didn't allow things that we wanted to happen. You know, uh, maybe jobs or living situations or relationships, you know, he just, we have, you know, sometimes just a rose colored lens or just an idealized sense of what could happen. And, you know, God protects us from, from ourselves. Um, sometimes we're just weak. Uh, we have weaknesses, we have struggles, temptations, and God is so faithful. You know, his grace is sufficient for us. His strength is made perfect in our weaknesses. He, you know, protects us. You know, sometimes we're so uh, weak that he just intervenes, you know, that happens sometimes. God just intervenes and, um, and comes up against our own worldly wisdom, our own fleshly wisdom, and he just, uh, in his good wisdom, he protects us from that. 
he also protects us, you know, from our fears. Um, Psalm 34, verse 4 says, I sought the Lord and he answered me and he delivered me from all my fears. He protects us from our fears and from living in a flight or fight, you know, survival mode. Um, it, he does that by revealing himself, you know, he reminds us of who he is. And in that, you know, in that, in him, we have peace. Uh, and, and from danger, you know, even in the most dangerous places, God is in our midst, you know, and he watches over us and he sustains us. And he protects us from the lie that, you know, all is lost or irreparable, you know. Um, if, you know, you're getting in a car accident, sometimes, you know, I've heard quite a few different accounts of people just saying, you know, they were at a stoplight and they, you know, could have gone, but then they, for some reason, you know, they just hesitated and, the, or, you know, they just really saw how the Lord protected them from having a car crash. But um, even if the worst thing should happen and you, you do get in a car crash, how good is our God? How redeeming is our God? You know, we can see so many good things happen from even um, a tragedy, you know, he redeems our tragedies. Romans 8, 28 through 29, you know, all things work together for good. We're able to see the, the bigger picture, um, you know, when, when it comes to God's protection, you know, in, in the smaller picture, it's like, why didn't the Lord protect me? In the bigger picture, we're able to surrender our faith and to see how God worked everything for his bigger, uh, better plan. And so all of this um, is just so good for our minds uh, and our hearts to, to focus on um, because it, it sets our hearts at rest. You know, we were able to remember um, who God is to him, to us. And uh, just in closing, John 17, verse 12, when Jesus is praying uh, for his followers, while I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you have given me. I have guarded them and not one of them has been lost except the son of destruction that the scripture might be fulfilled. You know, God, Jesus, how tender is that, that Jesus was praying, you know, and he, he guards us, he loves us, uh, he, he keeps us, you know, and so I just hope all of this just sets your heart at rest and just is uh, reminding you of ways that God has protected you uh, because he is a mighty guard. So why don't we just uh, pray as we close. Father, I thank you. Lord, that you are who you say you are, Lord, that we can rest in that, Lord. You don't disappoint us. Uh, give us, uh, Lord, a mind to, to see the bigger picture of things or to see your constant protection and uh, to live life in light of eternity, Lord, uh, looking at the bigger picture and looking at, uh, Lord, how your very word protects us, protects our minds and our hearts, Lord. Uh, let your word be a guard uh, over us, Lord. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, church family, I love you and I will see you soon. Take care.